I'm speaking today with Wayne Matson via video Skype link in Washington, D.C. Wayne Matson is a Washington, D.C. based investigative journalist. He's a frequent contributor on Russia Today, BBC, CNN, and ABC, just to name a few. 20 years of security experience with the, as a naval officer. He's also worked with the Department of State and the NSA, the National Security Agency. Wayne is also a member of the Society for Professional Journalists and the National Press Club. Wayne Matson, thank you so much for joining us live from D.C. Hi, good to be with you today. Good to be with you, too. Uh, it's quite clear, Wayne, with Rahm Emanuel as White House Chief of Staff for the last two years, that he is not eligible to run for mayor of Chicago, yet the election board in Chicago approved his uh, stature in the ballot for the upcoming election. Uh, we've talked on the phone several times, and we've discussed our uh, theories or on what could happen to Chicago with Emanuel as the mayor of Chicago. How dangerous could it be for the second city to have Rahm Emanuel as mayor of Chicago. Well, I remember what happened when uh, you had America's mayor, Rudy Giuliani, a very corrupt mafiosi type in New York. I mean, we had 9-11 happen. Uh, remember, that, that incident occurred on Election Day. Uh, and, 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 and Giuliani actually tried to extend his term as mayor, uh, like, he, uh, like he's like uh, Silvio Berlusconi in Italy. He tried to, he tried to like just violate the city charter in New York and, and, and stay on as mayor. Uh, I mean, this is unprecedented what some of these people will try to do. So now we look at Chicago. Uh, you've got uh, Emmanuel will try to take on that mantle, because I think Emmanuel's got bigger ambitions beyond uh, mayor of Chicago. He, I think he's always, uh, it, it, since he can't be Speaker of the House, he may be interested in running for President of the United States, just like Giuliani was interested in running for President of the United States. But, uh, but what we m might see in Chicago is, is, is Emmanuel becoming the new America's mayor. And look, they control, you know, he controls, he has access. Look at the brother, uh, the super agent. They have all kinds of ties to the media. They can make that reality happen. All they got to do is uh, snap their fingers. And, and, and so you got Rahm Emanuel, no longer this tough, um, this thuggish guy. You know, he's America's mayor. And uh, I would point out that the, the old Sears Tower is now owned by uh, Larry Silverstein, who also, of course, had the uh, lease on the World Trade Center. So uh, I don't like uh, what's coming together uh, in this perfect storm uh, uh, in Chicago. I think there's a lot of things that could happen because you've got the, you've got the organized crime element with the casinos. You've got Emmanuel. He's dirty his ties with Israeli intelligence and the Israeli government and the Likud party. They try to always say, oh, he's a liberal Israeli. You know, he's, he's liberal. He doesn't like the Likud. You know, that's, that's, a, that's a shell game people should ignore. Uh, uh, and, uh, you've got, and, and Silverstein owning the old Sears Tower, you put that all together, I think you got a recipe for potential, for, for another potential 9-11 in Chicago, one that will propel Emmanuel to uh, uh, superstar status and possible uh, national uh, political office. That this has not, no bearing on the case. Well, I think the fact that the President of the United States and a guy that hopes to be the next mayor of Chicago were members of the same gay bathhouse in North Chicago are very relevant to the, to, to, to the case against Blagojevich because, again, this is eliminating somebody who knows way too much to shift the attention off of those who are probably just as, as corrupt, if not more corrupt, than the accusations against Blagojevich. And that's, that's Obama and Emmanuel. And we'll get to those extracurricular activities in a second. It's also good to point out that the voters of Chicago should know this type of information before uh, voting for a, a mayor of one of the largest cities in the country, the third largest media market in all the country. The voters need to know uh, this type of information. Now, here we go, Wayne. This is the, the juicy part of what you found during your investigation here this summer in Chicago. Rahm Emanuel and Obama's secret past that they do not want anyone to know about, that they've even had a couple assassinations uh, to some of the members of what you call the Down Low Club. Can you go in length about Obama and Emanuel's uh, past at the grand old man's country on North Clark Street in Chicago? 
Well, this goes back to the 2008 presidential campaign when an, an individual named Larry Sinclair uh, surfaced uh, with some uh, amazing, uh, with amazing story about an, um, a relationship uh, he had with Obama back in 1999. I never thought about it until he saw Obama give the keynote address to the Democratic Convention in Boston in, in uh, 2004. He, he recognized him. I, I paid no attention to it. As a matter of fact, I discounted that rumor in 08 because there was really no proof. Uh, and, 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 and being somebody that has followed dirty tricks in the past, especially those uh, concocted by uh, Karl Rove in the 2000 and 2004 election campaigns, I knew that, you know, th these people are out there with dirty tricks. They'll try anything. So I discounted it. But uh, when I went to Chicago, I started talking to people about Obama's past, uh, this past that no one knows about, and also that of Emmanuel, this man's country, this bathhouse uh, uh, is mentioned. Uh, also, the uh, Trinity United Church of Christ, where Obama was a member, uh, the fact that uh, uh, that was being run as sort of a gay, uh, uh, married, uh, gay, uh, a black um, male uh, a dating service uh, uh, for weekend retreats, uh, this all came out. And, and then we had the choir director, uh, Donald Young, brutally m murdered in December of 07. Uh, a gangland hit style on another individual named Larry Bland, uh, also a member of that church, also being murdered. Uh, there was a lot of information that uh, Donald Young was somehow hooked up with Obama, and they were just eliminating potential witnesses to Obama's uh, uh, gay lifestyle. Now, you mentioned that both Emmanuel and Obama in your article uh, dated back in May, uh, May 24th, that they were lifetime members of man's country. Can you describe what man's country actually is uh, and why it's revered as uh, one of the uh, high upscaled uh, bathhouses in Chicago? Well, apparently it's a real seedy place. It's been around 30 years, but... Uh, even though it's seedy, it's still a, a place where people who have certain um, predilections uh, like to go because they know what they're getting. Uh, apparently, uh, Obama and lifetime membership is really paying, I guess, 10 bucks. Uh, uh, it gives you a lifetime membership. Uh, but uh, but uh, it, it's, it, it, in, in the case of Obama, uh, apparently he his uh, interest is is older white guys, and he likes to be the receiver of attention. Uh, I, I, there was no information that Obama and Emmanuel uh, were ever connected to each other, uh, that even that they may not have even been uh, members of this uh, uh, bathhouse at the, at the very same uh, time period. Uh, but uh, nevertheless, uh, this is the type of place that caters to this, uh, these types of people. It wasn't the only... Uh, place later, I found out that uh, um, uh, Obama had also frequented uh, parties at a place called the Purple Hotel in Lincolnwood, which was uh, known as a hangout where they had these parties, uh, uh, afternoon parties where there was drug use and a lot of uh, basically homosexual orgies taking place. So it wasn't just the bathhouse; there were other places mentioned by, and this came from people in the. In the gay community in Chicago, people who would know uh, that you know they don't have any axe to grind except for the fact they probably think that uh, Obama and Emmanuel are big phonies with their you know their uh, their families and how they always talk about their families and all this type of thing uh, that they're they're total hypocrites. And you can see that tough guy persona being brought forth by Emmanuel, maybe mentally to to try to forget about his secretive past. In the bathhouse, you report in your article that Emmanuel joined Man's Country after he left the Clinton White House when he moved back to Chicago in 1998 and then again in his 2002 campaign. Yeah, this past week, uh, this past week, uh, uh, Rosa DeLauro, who provided Rahm Emanuel with the townhouse he lived in while he was a member of Congress, this is back when the family uh, was in, uh, in Chicago. Now, when he became chief of staff, uh, he, um, 
he 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 had a, a regular residence here with his family in Washington. But during this time frame, when he was a member of Congress, he lived in this townhouse. And apparently, during this uh, during this time frame, um, um, this townhouse was wired with audio and and video, and and may have been used to uh, tape secretly some of. Uh, of the cavortings in the townhouse, which I was told by very good sources included not only Emmanuel's use of the townhouse for these activities, but also Senator Barack Obama's use of the townhouse for these activities. Uh, this past week, Rosa DeLauro's longtime chief of staff, a woman named Ashley Turton, who's married to President Obama's chief of liaison to the House of Representatives, Dan Turton, uh, went out to her car at 5 o'clock in the morning uh, in her garage, uh, in, a, in her townhouse in, on Capitol Hill, turned on the ignition, and the car caught fire somehow. Now, the police are saying it, it hit something and, 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 and caught fire, but uh, uh, she was burned, burned up in the car. She died. So um, we're, we're being told by the Washington police that this was a freaky accident. Uh, I don't believe in freaky accidents in this town when it has to do with somebody who was a uh, a chief of staff to Delaro, who was providing Emmanuel with this house, uh, this townhouse where he lived, uh, and somebody who's uh, that close to the White House. I don't believe in freaky accidents. They don't. They don't happen usually. Uh, this was a scene right out of one of these Hollywood political thrillers. Uh, so I think uh, was this an attempt to clean things up for Emmanuel, so there's no problems. Uh, well, we don't know yet, but uh, we definitely have a suspicious death here in Washington. Somebody who may have known about Emmanuel and what he was doing in this townhouse the time he was a member of Congress here. And Wayne, you've had multiple sources reading your articles throughout the summer confirming what you've just mentioned about Emmanuel and Obama's uh, secretive past, including members of uh, the Democratic Party and the Congressional Black Congress, correct? Uh, yeah, I've talked to people in the Congressional Black Caucus when they first encountered uh, Senator Obama. He was the only senator who was a member of the Black Caucus. They they noted you know some things about him that just weren't you know they you know they were they thought were odd like the the clear nail polish that he was wearing. Um, you know when I I asked I asked one um, black member of the caucus, well you know I've been told that that could be a metrosexual thing, and this member said. Where I come from, that ain't that ain't metrosexual. That's homosexual. So the 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 the, the, the members of the Black Caucus were well uh, uh, alerted to this uh, fact that that what you see with Obama on television isn't really uh, the the real Obama. And we look at you look at the guy's past, and of course there are so many question marks. And I am not uh, I'm not one of these birth certificate people. I think he was born in Hawaii. I think the White House loves that because uh, it's a diversion. Uh, it sends people off on a tangent when, in fact, the real issue is uh, his passport record. What, who did he really work for when he was supposed to be at Occidental and Columbia? Uh, what was all the foreign travel really about? And who did the family, mom, grandfather, grandmom, stepdad, who did they really work for back in the 60s, 70s, and 80s? Wayne, you also had in your July 19th article that the White House went into damage control once you released this story, and also the Globe newspaper uh, picked up on your report and your investigation. Uh, can you describe what the White House was actually doing to try to silence uh, the information being brought forth about Rahm Emanuel and President Obama? Well, they did. It's it's what the White House will do in any with any administration. They don't like anything negative, especially something of this nature. I mean, it happened back in the Bush administration too, when when I found out that Cheney uh, had had dealings with the 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 late D.C. Madam back when he was the head of Halliburton. They try to put these fires out. Um, uh, you know, they'll say, "Oh, it's a it's vicious conspiracy theory." They would rather than be ignored, but. Uh, they will uh, they will try to put these fires out, uh, make it sound like these are just uh, uh, vicious rumors without any basis of fact, and, and uh, this is what they they normally do. It's not unusual. You would almost expect it from any White House. Again, we're here with Wayne Matson, Wayne Matson Report.
dot com. Wayne, with this being said of the shady past between Rah Rahm Emanuel, uh, mayor candidate of Chicago, and President Barack Obama, these two candidates, how perfect are they in terms of being blackmailed? Are they the perfect uh, blackmailed candidates? I think so. I mean, but I, I mean, when we you, we think in terms of blackmail, we think maybe some foreign intelligence agency might be the be the blackmail agent. But I think in this case, it's it's our own government has the goods on them to keep them in line to make sure they don't uh, they do exactly what they're expected to do. I think this is primarily the case with Obama. Although with Rahm Emanuel, I think. It's quite clear he may have ties to the Israeli intelligence service, Mossad. Whether they would put him in a blackmail position or not is, I think, I, you know, we just don't know. He may just be a loyal, a very loyal to uh, to working for them. I mean, as a veteran of the Israel Defense Force, he obviously has had past connections with them. Wayne, final thoughts with you. Anything that we've missed in this investigation on Rahm Emanuel and the Chicago Democratic machine and... Uh, Anything else you would like to cover on Rahm Emanuel? Uh, again, I would I would go back to look at uh, some of his er, uh, earlier campaigns for Congress in the Fifth District. Uh, I, uh, I spoke to many people who ran against him, Democrats and Republicans and Independents, and uh, it was quite clear that th this guy is a dirty operator. Uh, he will be as 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 dirty uh, a mayor of Chicago as you've ever seen with anybody in the past, and that includes the Dailies, uh, because of, of this uh, involvement he has with uh, uh, casinos, uh, foreign intelligence operatives, and uh, and 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 some of this uh, seamier side um, of, um, of of Chicago politics, including his. Um, his association with the real estate developers, are the same people that try to uh, get the Olympics. Because let's re remember, as chief of staff, Emmanuel gave the final green light for Obama to go to Copenhagen and try to get the Olympics. So he also, Emmanuel, thought he could make money on that. And uh, so that, that money uh, uh, taints him as well as uh, Valerie Jarrett, uh, the late school board president. Uh, and, and, and the other individuals who were part of that, including Michelle Obama, I should add. Wayne, how, you, you mentioned that you wanted to challenge Chicago Sun-Times, Chicago Tribune, and the Daily Herald to try to pick up your story and see if they can do some investigation. Yet, from your report in the summer, none of those papers have really done anything. None of the TV no. networks in Chicago, ABC7, NBC5, CBS2, WGN, none of them have really picked up this story or have done any investigation on Rahm Emanuel. How important is it for you and for the voters of Chicago to become aware of Rahm Emanuel Manual and prevent uh, catastrophe from happening in the second city. It's really important, and I hate to say it, but the the grand old days of um, of Chicago newspapers, the the Tribune and the Sun Times, uh, uh, when the reporters used to hang out at the Billy Go Tavern uh, uh, down uh, uh, downtown Chicago, I think are over with. Uh, this has a lot to do with the you know what's happening in the newspapers across the country, but. Uh, the fact is that Sam Zell uh, owns the, uh, you know, took over the Tribune and basically emaciated it. Uh, the Sun Times was emaciated by uh, Hollinger and, uh, and 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 Conrad Black when he owned it. Uh, they've never recovered. Uh, there is no independent, uh, you know, the days of Mike Royko and and these others are, are over with. And and uh, I only see the internet, uh, some of the blogs. Uh, picking up the slack uh, to do that, but there's a resource issue. Uh, it's not cheap to go after some of this corruption, but I would hope that people uh, in Chicago uh, uh, try to get as much information as they can from the Internet uh, on on these connections uh, with Emmanuel and the, the Obama uh, uh, group, uh, Axelrod, who used to you know work for uh, the uh, Chicago uh, Tribune, uh, and still has some connections there. But, uh, the, but the, the days of a vibrant Chicago press to go after this corruption uh, are unfortunately over, over with in a, 
and a, a thing of the past. Wayne, fire out your website for those who are interested in what you do and would like to read some of your articles. Yes, it's WayneMatsonReport.com, and I started it because we also here in Washington have lost the muckraking spirit of Jack Anderson and Drew Pearson, the Washington merry-go-round, uh, even people before their time, uh, going back to H.L. Mencken and, and, and the work he did in Baltimore, uh, which covered Washington, too, Washington politics. But that, that, this has long since kind of uh, disappeared. Uh, we don't have any muckraking spirit. So I tried, and when I started this website in 05, to bring back the spirit of the Washington merry-go-round, uh, which basically helped bring down people from Joseph McCarthy uh, to Richard Nixon and Watergate and Iran-Contra in the 1980s. It, it, it helped expose a lot of these things. But as long as these politicians and these criminals think they can get away with this stuff, because there's no active independent press, they will do it. And, uh, and that's why the founders of this country uh, decided it was important uh, to put in the uh, First Amendment freedom of the press uh, because in those days the press was actually not major newspapers. It was they were much, the press was much like websites and blogs today. They were uh, pamphlets and, and 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 people talk. Well, this stuff isn't sourced today. Well, it wasn't sourced then, but the founders thought it was important uh, enough to protect that, even even though it wasn't sourced. And a lot of those pamphlets were scurrilous in nature. They thought it was important to protect it. And, uh, and and I think that's what we need to try to do uh, while we still have the Internet. Believe me, there's there's work being done by Obama's guy, Cass Sunstein, to try to end the Internet. And his other friend, uh, uh, Jen Chowski, the head of the FCC, uh, when, they, when they get together and conspire, uh, we may not see uh, the Internet uh, the way we see it today. By the way, Cass Sunstein has Chicago connections from the University of Chicago. So yeah. that Chicago marriage yeah. around... Uh, working well out in D.C. Wayne Matson, thank you so much for joining us live in Washington, D.C. God bless and uh, stay safe out in D.C. with your reporting. Okay, thank you. That's Wayne Matson of WayneMatsonReport.com. I'm Julio Rausale. Thank you so much for joining us on this Reality Report special investigation on Rahm Emanuel. It's up to you to get this news out and prevent what could be the new mafia boss of Chicago. I'm Julio Rauseo saying peace, love, and God bless. And don't forget to stick around for more of the Reality Report on RTR.org. So long. Yes, I wanted to alert you to a serious situation, I think. I know it's a little bit off subject, but, um, you know, the same group that bought the World Trade Center complex two months before 9-11. Has bought uh, the bought Sears the Tower, Sears. Larry Silverstein, and now they're trying to put their man, Rahm Emanuel, in Chicago. Oh, okay, see, so you're, you're, you're fully aware of it. Good. I'm glad, I'm glad you connected the dots to that. Yeah, we covered it when he bought it three years ago. Yeah, they, they said they announced they're going to paint it silver, too, which is, of course, how nano-explosives technology is applied. So uh, they could be easily they could easily stage another attack there and then blame it on the Iranians or wherever they want to. You know, my mom, um, we took the kids, uh, uh, you know, on a trip this weekend, and uh, she, she she talked about in her gut, she thinks they're going to probably blow up the uh, no longer the Sears Tower. Just when you put all the pieces together, I think uh, I think you're on to something. Speaking of Rahm Emanuel, I'm glad you brought that up. Hold on, let me find it. Hold on just a second. Rahm Emanuel is famous for sending dead fish to people. That's a Sicilian message, even though he's not Sicilian. Uh, you will sleep with the fishes. Uh, he's famous, of course, in front of the press, stabbing the table with a knife when he reads the names of political enemies and saying, dead, dead, dead. Our office, sent to our address, was sent by the Rahm Emanuel uh, for mayor campaign. You know, we've been very critical of his mafia connections uh, as of late, been focusing on that. Uh, my office was sent a letter from Rahm Emanuel thanking us for his support, for our support, and giving us a Rahm for mayor uh, bumper sticker from Chicago. And I wonder if this is a joke by somebody in his office or if it's something more. Is this a little Chicago land message? Uh, what do you think, Don? I, I have no idea. He's a very strange character. His father was an Aragon terrorist, though. And uh, he's, a, he's a very, uh, very uh, mean person. You know, everybody knows that. Yeah, we've been covering that Aragon situation for three years and uh, just had uh, Wayne Madsen on about it. Uh, just a few days ago on Friday covering it, but absolutely. Here's the Rahm Emanuel letter to me. 
thanking me for my support. Never supported him. Uh, maybe somebody made a contribution or something as a joke in my name. I don't know why I got this. I hope it's not a veiled threat, but he's the type of guy that does it. Rom for mayor, and uh, I've got this right here. I really appreciate uh, your call. So there it is, ladies and gentlemen. Wonder what that means. Justice is not about agenda. It's not about mobilizing people. It's about dialing for corporate dollars. These two parties have sold the U.S. government and the American people to the highest bidders.